of a reversing solenoid that's acting up, to take it apart, how to install it, safety procedure, um, how to properly diagnose and actually test to ensure that this is indeed your actual problem. All right, guys, today we are going to be working on our Lippert leveling system. We have a reversing solenoid that's acting up. Uh, today in this video, I'm going to show you how to take it apart, how to install it, safety procedures, um, how to properly diagnose and actually test to ensure that this is indeed your actual problem and your failure in your trailer. Um, I've been a mechanic for over 15 years of my life, so I'm very comfortable and confident uh, working with tools, electricity, and safety procedures. If you are not uh, that confident in yourself and your abilities, I would recommend you take it to a licensed professional or a local dealer or someone that is. Um, anyways, let's get to it. All right, so first thing we need to do is we need to go to our electronics bay where our hydraulic unit, our Lippert hydraulic unit, and the controls are uh, for the system itself. You need to locate the reversing solenoid, which is up here on the side of my trailer uh, in this bay here. All right, so just a quick breakdown of this reversing solenoid unit. The On the main side of the solenoid, there's going to be three posts. There's going to be your central post, your middle post, which is going to be your battery power. This is going to be coming from your batteries or your battery turn-off switches. And these other two posts are going to be going to your motor. Um, I'll go into more depth once we get out, get this unit out of the RV here in depth as to what these posts go to, how exactly they work, and indeed how to test them. The first thing we need to do is we need to ensure that the electricity is turned off. This is a 12 volt system, it's battery operated, so what you can do is you can simply, um, either one, you can just turn off your battery switches, which I will do here right now. I will turn both of these off. Both of those are off, and then to ensure that we have no power, the bottom stud on this side, right behind the positive lead, this bottom stud back here is going to be your negative. You can hook a test light up to it, just with a simple clamp. And you can hit your test light to the positive terminal. And as long as your test light does not turn on, you will be sure that there is no power going here. So the power is turned off. We have made sure and double checked that it is off because there is a substantial amount of load going here. There's an 80 amp breaker on these things, uh, which if you don't have it, uh, the power off and accidentally short something out, the breaker will protect you, but I ensure you, you, you will scare the crap out of yourself with the amount of sparks uh, that this thing makes if you touch it. Uh, but for now, we're going to take all these wires off. Uh, if you don't have a good memory of where they go, please mark them. You can typically just mark like a one or a two on the wire itself and then a one or two next to the stud of where it belongs. That way when it comes time to go back where it goes, everything goes back where it's supposed to. And I'll tell you exactly why later, why that's important. So we're going to get some tools out. Uh, these look to be probably 13 millimeter, 14 millimeter um, nuts. We'll take these lines off and we'll show you what to do next. Now that we have our reversing solenoid out of the trailer, I'll talk to you guys about a few things about how exactly these things work. So they have six ports on them. They have uh, four cable ports and two wire ports for your signal. These two smaller ports are for your signal wires. You have a battery negative port, a battery positive port, and then you also have two studs for your electric motor. It'll be a reversing motor that can spin both directions. That's why they call it a reversing solenoid. So how these things typically work is you're going to get a signal. Uh, you're going to get a 12 volt signal on either one of these studs. It's going to come from either a switch uh, or the electronic leveling gear controller uh, in your Lippert leveling system. And what it's going to do is it's going to send 12 volts, for example, for 12 volts example to this stud. So it's going to take the battery power from these two center studs because remember this one's the ground, this one's the positive, and it's going to, it's going to send 12 volts to this stud and negative uh, battery power to this stud, which is going to turn your motor in one direction. Now to switch the voltage in the other direction, it's going to send 12 volt signal power to this stud on your, control, on your reversing solenoid. 
And what it's going to do now is instead of having your positive power be here and negative power here, it's going to put positive power here and negative power here. Therefore, it's going to be reversing how your electric motor works. Therefore, turning your hydraulic pumps to make them go either extend out or go in, and it's going to reverse um, the electricity and how everything turns within your system. Uh, these things are very standard within the industry. They can, they can be used for all sorts of things. They can be used in commercial applications, uh, for conveyor belts that need to go forward and backwards. In the heavy truck industry, they're used for tarp motors and sometimes for some other electronic things that because the tarp motors need to go forward and backwards. And they do that with um, reversing um, polarity on the electric motors. And in, for our example, for the RV here, it's used for the landing gear to make the landing gear go down and then make the landing gear also go up by simply reversing the polarity on the electric motors to make the motors turn either clockwise or counterclockwise therefore making hydraulic pumps go up or down uh, to make all that work it works off of battery power uh, the, the very first thing you need to check is is check for positive 12 volts uh, coming from your battery sometimes you have breaker problems sometimes you have a dead battery sometimes you can have a uh, loose connection uh, so your center stud here is going to be your positive uh, power just make sure you have good solid 12 volts coming to it then the next test is going to be checking your negative. Make sure you have a good solid ground, make sure nothing's corroded, make sure everything's good and tight, and make sure the ground is working here. Uh, the next thing you need to do is make sure you have your inputs, your signal wire inputs coming into either one of these um, switches. So the easiest way to do it is to put a test light with the wire hooked up here, put your switch either up or down, and make sure you have 12 volts coming to here. And same thing with your switch in the opposite direction on this side. When you have the switch in the opposite direction, there'll be 12 volts coming to this side to make sure that your signal wires are sending the proper signal to the solenoid to make it actually function. Uh, if you do not have 12 volts coming to either one of these wires, depending on which way you have the switch, then you have a signal issue problem and that's going to be for another video. As far as the reversing solenoid goes, as long as you have uh, good power here, uh, a negative power here, and then you have your signal wires which are working properly, the next test is going to be taking your test light and hooking it up to one stud on this side. Hit your switch and what you're going to do is you're going to hear kind of like a thunk inside the solenoid. Sometimes there's a thunk and sometimes that's what's making the connection inside the solenoid. And you want to make sure that you have power on, on one side and a negative on the other side. And then you want to flip the switch the other way and they're going to reverse. And this stud will be a positive and this stud will be a negative. Nine times out of the ten, as long as you have a good power, good power, good negative, and your signal wires are working, then this is typically uh, going to be the issue here. Uh, if you don't have good power, obviously you have a problem with that. If you don't have negative power, uh, that's an issue there, or your signal wires. Uh, other than that, they're very simple units to use. Uh, you can go up online and, and research them. Uh, there's not many out there. Byers makes them. Cole Hersey makes them. If you don't know exactly what you're looking at, I would definitely call the manufacturer of your trailer with the serial number and order up exactly what parts you need for your trailer. Uh, there are load rating differences. There are amp rating differences. Um, there are uh, usage intervals. Some of these are made to be intermittently used. Some of these are made to be on all the time. Uh, and there are those differences, so you need to know about them. Uh, like I said, these systems have 80 amp breakers in them, um, so these things are designed up for 80 amps runtime. They're also designed for about 125 amps uh, spike on initial startup. Um, like I said, just know, do your research on it, and if you don't know how to do your research or what you're looking at, just call the manufacturer and they'll send you the, exactly the right part that you need. Uh, if you do know what you're looking at, you can do plenty of research, and then there's not many to choose from out there. Uh, most of the time, all the amps and the loads, all of that are on the back side of your reversing solenoid, and you'll be able to find that up on anything online um, as far as electronics go to be able to find a replacement. I know Cole Hersey makes them, uh, Byers makes them. There's lots of manufacturers out there. Uh, stay away from the cheapy crap because in the electronic stuff, the internal parts uh, can be cheaper, and nowadays you do get what, what you pay for. Um, so now that we explained all that, let's go ahead and put it back in and we'll see how that goes. Alright, so now we got everything installed. We made sure we got our signal wires put back on. Uh, one thing I did mention earlier in videos, you want to make sure you mark your signal wires. 
to make sure they go on in the right spot because if you don't mark them correctly uh, you're going to be spinning everything the opposite direction that your leveling system thinks it's going to be going so things if you mean to go up your hydraulics are going to go down and vice versa so make sure you get these signal wires on exactly which way they go uh, same thing with your motor wires uh, if you get those screwed up your motor is going to be spinning the wrong direction um, get your power back on and get your ground wire back on and other than that that's it you give her a test and you're good to go all right we got everything back together we got everything tested it works that was a successful repair in review here this is a reversing solenoid uh, you're going to have your positive i'm sorry you're going to have your ground your battery positive your reversing poles going to your motor your signal switches coming from either your switches or your leveling um, controlling system in my case it's a lippert uh, it's a very simple system to use once you understand it uh, before you start doing anything uh, once you finish diagnosing the problem make sure you have your power off uh, make sure you mark your cables and wires and your signal wires as which they go so you can put it back exactly the way you found it if not you're going to create more of a headache for yourself and all in all if you guys like the video hit that like subscribe button we'll see you all next time